Hello everyone, my name is Kirsty and I'm a learning officer at the Royal Parks and I work on a project called Mission Invertebrates um, and the project is all about um, celebrating, discovering and protecting the invertebrates that call the Royal Parks home. What is an invertebrate you might wonder? Well, all the animals in the world can be separated into two main groups. One of these groups is the, the vertebrate group and the other are the invertebrates. And to determine which one you belong to, have a feel at the back of your neck. So most of you will probably know that the hard knobbly bit that you feel is the beginning of your backbone or your spine. And your backbone or your spine um, is made up of lots of individual bones called vertebrae. And that is why we are called vertebrate animals, because our spines are made up of vertebrae. Now other vertebrates apart from human beings um, are things like um, badgers and toads and fish and lizards um, and things like birds as well. Now it's the invertebrates we're thinking about today um, and most of you probably know that the invertebrates are a bit smaller than the vertebrates, so the ones that don't have a backbone, especially here in the UK and the parks that we have here in the UK, um, the ones that you will come across are a lot smaller, so things like snails and slugs, um, centipedes, um, things like spiders and beetles and butterflies, these are all invertebrates that you might come across um, in London's royal parks. Now I mentioned the very special group that we're going to zoom in on today and that group is the spiders um, and at this time of year quite a lot of people think about spiders because you see them a bit more, they tend to be a bit bigger at this time of the year um, and they are looking for mates so they're a bit more visible so they're out and about um, but spiders are great, they, they have eight legs, um, a lot of them have eight eyes and they produce silk as well. And many of the spiders that we have here in the UK, they produce silk in order to create some sort of web to catch their prey in. And today, we're going to be making one of those types of web. Um, we're going to be making what we call an orb web. So this is one that I did earlier. Um, this is a, an, an orb web, and you might recognise it as looking a bit like a bicycle wheel. Um, and that's how we describe an orb web. And it's usually um, orb, weaver, orb weaving spiders that make these webs, and you see a lot of them around in October. Now, to make this web, what we need um, is a pair of scissors, some wool, and just three sticks. Now, the sticks that you're going to use, they can come from your garden or someone else's garden, um, maybe a park or a local green space. Um, make sure that you don't take them off the live trees though, just collect the ones that are, that are dead on the ground. Try and make sure they're similar in size, so similar in length, if they're not the same length you can always just cut them or snap a bit off them. Um, but yeah, as long as they're roughly um, quite straight as well, you don't want them super wonky. So yeah, you've got your three sticks, your scissors and your wool. The first step here is to cut off a piece of wool. So cut off a length that's maybe about a metre or so doesn't need to be exact and then lay your piece of wool down on the surface that you're working on so whether that's a table or whatever other surface you're working on and then you can take your three sticks and overlap them so what I did there is I held one flat on my hand crisscross the second one and you can see my thumb is holding it in place and then the third one goes on top so my thumb and my fingers underneath are securing it to make sure that it stays in place. So my thumb's holding the centre together. Now what I'm going to do is place the overlap, the overlap sticks on top of the piece of wool. And then I'm going to take each end of the wool and I'm going to cross over the middle and I'm going to tie a knot. So it's just a simple overhand knot, nothing fancy, and then just pull it either side, make it nice and tight. Now what I've just done there with that knot, I'm going to repeat a few times. So I'm going to take the wool and I'm going to tuck it under, like that. So your sticks will still move around a bit at this stage. And I'm going to tuck this piece under here. So I'm just bringing it through another two, like two different sticks and I'm going to tie again. So I'll crisscross the wool and tie a knot like that. So 
So I'll repeat that a few times to make sure that my frame is nice and strong. Because of course spider silk is incredibly strong and that's what we're trying to replicate here. So these sticks, of course, if an orb weave spider, orb weaving spider was to make one of these webs would be silk. And the silk is produced in the abdomen, which is the big bulbous bit at the back of the spider. And when it's inside the spider, it's actually liquid. And it comes out through glands. Well, the glands are in the abdomen, but it comes out through little appendages at the very back of the spider called spinnerets. And when it comes out, it's lovely and silky. So it becomes almost solid when it's outside the spider's body. There we go. Okay, so that's nice and tight. I've done a few, I've done a few knots now, and I'm quite happy with that. So as you can see, I've got I've got some wool left over, so I'm just going to continue to wrap it around any old way so there doesn't need to be a pattern to this. Just wrap it around. We want to just try and pad it out and make sure that it's nice and secure. So we'll just keep wrapping and wrapping like that. And if you have someone that can help you with this, it might be a bit handy because it's good to have an extra set of hands. Because as you can see, it's a little bit fiddly. Okay, so I've tied off the wool and I've just trimmed the ends off. And that's my frame ready um, for some web weaving to begin. So next I'm going to use some more wool. So I'm going to cut off another length of the wool. But this time it's going to be quite a bit longer. So I'm going to cut off maybe about two metres worth of wool. Um, and what to do is to take the end and tie it on to your frame. Tie it onto your frame quite close to the centre. And again, just use a little overhand knot. And if you can get it close to one of these little knobbly bits on your stick, then great, because then it won't slide around. It's got something to press up against. So I've just double knotted that to make sure it stays nice and secure. And I'm going to snip off the end of the wool. And now it's time to start spinning our web. So I'm going to take the wool underneath the stick that's next to the one I tied the wool onto. So I'm just taking it underneath and now I'm going to wrap it over the top like that. And then in a circular motion, I'm just going to do the same all the way around my frame. So I'm just going to keep weaving I get back round to the beginning where I tied it on. And that's me. I've got one layer complete. Now, the next thing to do is to move outwards. And then we'll do another layer. Like that. And all the way around. Now, before I mention this is an orb web, there are three other types of web in the UK that you'll see quite commonly. And one of these is called a sheet web. And a sheet web looks a bit like a hammock. And that's exactly how it works. So it's, it's there to catch prey. So prey falls into the sheet web that the spider makes. And the spiders that make sheet webs include those tiny little money spiders that you might see around. They make sheet webs. Um, and so, yeah, that's what they do. They catch their prey in their hammock-like sheet webs. And usually they can be found on the grass um, or they can be found down low in bushes or in low, low trees as well. Another type of web is the tangle web. So there are quite a few spiders in the UK that make tangle webs. And tangle webs are three-dimensional. This one is a very neat geometric pattern being an orb web but tangle webs would probably look a bit more like this <laughs> messy now I'm almost finished making my orb web 
and you can see I've got a little bit of wool left over. I'm not going to go all the way to the end because I want to make sure that I've got some wool left over to be able to hang it up with. So I'm just going to tie it off where I am. So again, I've come across a little knobbly bit on this piece of wood. So that'll stop it slipping and I'll double knot it again. And then I've got a section to hang it with. And there you go, there's your orb web. Now you can use this as a Halloween decoration or you gift it to someone if you want to. Um, but yes, that's what an orb web looks like. Now the final web that I haven't mentioned yet are the funnel webs. Funnel webs is in the name, they look very much like funnels and the spider sits in the little funnel waiting for prey to be caught in the silk that it's made into a web. Um, and an example of a funnel web spider is a house spider. So it's something that you've probably seen plenty of, um, a house spider, they, they make funnel webs and they're quite different from the other three that we've talked about. Now this autumn, do look out for spider webs because it's very easy to spot spider webs in the autumn because of all the, the moisture that's in the air. So there's dew in the morning um, and it's just generally mistier. So actually it really highlights the beauty of the webs, um, making them a bit easier to see. And it's the same with the spiders in general themselves because actually autumn is known as spider season because at this time of the year, as I mentioned before, they tend to be quite big in size um, and they're looking for mates. So yes, now is the time to get out and roll the spiders that you can. Thanks for watching our video today. I hope you've enjoyed making your orb web with us. Um, if you'd like to find out more about the Mission Invertebrate Project, then just head over to our web pages uh, where you'll find out more information.